So for those of you who maybe don't know me very well, so my name is Mark, and I'm Mark McKinnon. I'm the uh, owner of Discovery Publishing Company, the president, as well as one of the primary RPG designers that uh, relaunched with Discami, uh, the best and fourth edition and anime 5e. Right now we have kickstarting some tri-stack games, which uh, is a system that I developed as well. So uh, up to now, I've kind of been the, the primary gamer guy, but going forward, we're going to be bringing in some, uh, some other people to do some excellent writing uh, in that because I, I can't take it all on. So um, so let me just talk a little bit about what's happening currently in case you haven't been following along. So right now we are running a, uh, a Kickstarter, as I mentioned, which is for the TriStat system. These are mini games that were designed uh, kind of to be uh, small micro genre versions of uh, a very particular setting, very particular style of play and characters, rather than the incredibly large and kind of unrestricted TriStat system. So in Best and Fourth Edition, which is the most recent implementation of the TriStat system, it's a universal system. So you can play, you know, any universe, any genre, any setting. And because of that, the core book is fairly large, over 350 pages, and it has to be if it's going to deal with everything. But we wanted something that was a little more focused, and this allowed us to take the TriStat system and do two things with it. One is strip it down. If we're only dealing with a very specific genre, for example, one of the games we have is called Pixies. So it's little tiny creatures living in your house, whether it's uh, you know an Arietti or the Borrowers, something like that. If we're dealing with something on that scale, very, very specific, we can cut down the amount of rules that we're going to need tremendously because you know, best can do so much. We don't need item creation rules, for example, uh, or, or many other aspects of the TriStat system. So not only can we narrow it down and focus it and take that 350 page book and turn it into a 32 page rule book, but also we can play with the system a little bit and customize it better for the genre in a way that that's still familiar and still compatible with a tricest system but it presents a different way of looking at it and one really simple example would be say in the base tristat system we have attack combat mastery or attack mastery and defense mastery so this modifies your attack combat value and defense combat value separately but in pixies and many of the tristat games we just have something that modifies combat itself. We've kind of taken away the separation between attack and defense. We've also taken away the, the separation between melee attack and ranged attack. So in Bessem Tristat, when you're looking at having a multi-genre system handling everything, the fact that we have attack and defense for range, for melee, that's what you want to do to be able to create the exact version of the character you want. Someone who's excellent, say, a snipering or with a bow, or someone that's really good hand-to-hand, uh, -hand, unarmed combat. But in Pixies, that, that didn't really apply. And so we can have not just a smaller version of the rules, but also a customized version of the rules. This also allows us to uh, do something with the magic system, for example. Just one moment. <coughs> Sorry about that. So with the Magic system in Bessem in TriStat, it is dynamic powers or power flux, very, very open-ended. And you can create spells. And when we came up with Bessem Extras, for example, we talked about the, the power bundles and the power packs, how you can create exactly what you want. But because it's designed to be a universal system, it actually takes maybe a little bit longer to create something because, because if we're creating a system that can handle everything, it's not going to do anything quickly because of the complexity in its scope, in its range. Where in Pixies, we wanted these characters to have spells, but very, very defined spells. So I want a spell that can make my Pixie get big. So if you're getting chased around by a cat, for example, maybe your particular character has one magic spell that they can do and they can turn as big as a cat. So in that case, we define a very specific spell system and the magic only allows you to have access to very specific spells, which we then spell out for you we give the exact game effect that it has which is another thing of course in, in the base tricep system as a universal multi-genre system it's primarily effects based which means we don't if you do a damage if you have a weapon you shoot something out of your hand well it could be lightning could be fire could be pure energy could be gravity we don't care what it is we give you the effect what is the effect you have something that shoots out of your hand that causes damage but in a specific application 
that is when you get into the power base. So in Pixies, once again, as an example, we have a very specific application of a universal system. So it kind of moves it from an effects-based system into a powers-based system. Powers-based would like Dungeons and Dragons, for example, where you can have a fireball, a lightning bolt, they're effectively the same spell. They cause damage, and how they exactly do it is a little bit different. One's lightning, one's fire, one shoots in a line, one has an area effect, but they have so many different spells that do kind of the same thing with different window dressing. That's a powers-based game versus an effects-based game, which is described earlier. It doesn't matter what the effect is. You describe the effect. We, the, the, How it's implemented is not important. So I don't want to go too far on, onto that. I just want to give you an idea of what we're doing right now with the TriStat system minigame. So if we have the universal system in Bessem, why would you, why would anybody be interested in these small applications of these TriStat system box sets, these smaller, lesser versions of a Bessem? And that's because they're, they're not really smaller, lesser. They are different and targeted and focused and variations. And we think that particularly Bassam fans, are going to be interested in seeing them because they'll give you options that you might not have considered. Something really simple, again, depending on the application you have in your game, is when we did, say, the health system. Uh, and so we set up all the damage, all the uh, weapons, as well as your health points based on the system that is course tristat. So your health points, for example, is your body plus your soul times five and then your weapons do a certain amount of damage and you have armor that protects you in a certain way well what we did is we stripped out the times five multipliers and we dropped everything down by a factor of five so that now instead of having a health of 40 you have a health of eight as an example uh, a lot easier to work with instead of a weapon doing 15 damage it might do one or two damage now again it's a variation of that presentation, which works really well for the streamline of that. So the reason I wanted to talk about that first is, you know, that's what we're running Kickstarter right now. Uh, we launched it two days ago, and in the first 48 hours, it did uh, get its funding target, which is great. We had very modest goals for this Kickstarter. We didn't expect it to be on the level of um, Bessem, 4th edition, or certainly Anime 5e, which was a, a smash success. But we thought that this is is good for the game line, good, good for TriStat, and good for the fans that are looking to get some different types of support from Bessem to just kind of show what the flexibility is, which is why we didn't just create one. We have three different games, and that's uh, Pixies, which is you're playing little tiny pixie types characters. We have Demonicity, which is a game where you're playing secret operatives that kind of have to stop a, a coming darkness in this demon city so familiar to you know demon city shinjuku the movie or wicked city or buffy the vampire slayer some lovecrafting horror that's demonicity you're playing humans or or close to humans maybe you have a couple demon powers and you're playing those and going in and dealing with the operatives in that section and the final one we have is Worms. So Worms is a little strange. Uh, this is a game where you're actually playing dragons, but not just normal dragons. You have um, giant worms, and there's only a few of them uh, in the world. We, we don't give it a specific number, but then these giant worms can divide into or what's called sundering into the player characters, which are the dragon kind. So it's kind of like a like a Voltron type go lion where you have four or five or six different player characters that can combine together to greet this giant worm and then these worms uh, ultimately they they feel this pull towards each other to fight and eat each other um, because in doing that that's how they gain in power and so worms is a game where you're playing huge dragon kind whether it's a, a wyvern a dragon or a, a ryu so like a japanese style dragon you're playing those which are all sunder mates you're all part of the, the same worm these dragon kinds and you're fighting against other dragon kind other worms but it's not just about that you can you know you can play it as politically as you want uh, exploration so we have worms being gigantic huge and pixies being very very small and then demonicity you're playing humans or near humans so we kind of covered like a, a, a quite a good range of spectrum of it we have other games planned in the future but those are the first three we wanted to launch so uh thanks for for listening to that kind of introduction i just figured i'd set the stage because it's the product that i know people know the least about because it, it's not out yet and the kickstarter just started and we haven't really done a lot of promotion on it because because the games are so small there's not a lot we can actually release in advance but we're going through and giving kind of sneak peeks as we go uh for that so uh just going back through some of the comments uh yeah, thanks hr I, hr was involved in some of the earlier stuff for our playtesting groups for doing the demonicity i know that i was a, a big fan uh 
you really liked what we had there. And I think Demonicity is, is great. We got some great art for it, some really good ideas, uh, really good epic kind of fighting against you know, the end of the world uh, if you don't stop these demons and coming through. Um, so you had a question or a comment about the Aporum does not need to be Basin specific. Yeah, and that's up to now, the Tristat Emporium has been specific for Basil because that was the only game we had out. And so it was the best implementation of TriStat. But moving forward, we're actually opening it up to other versions of TriStat, including, say, any of these versions that come out in the uh, the box set trios. But not just that. We, are, we haven't announced it yet. We're still working on the final details. But we uh, DriveThru only allows a company to have one community content program. And we know that that Anime 5e, which was very successful for us, and we want to support that line. So we're going to be expanding the community content program so that we can provide an SRD and we can provide assets and then people can publish them, their own products that they create, their own ideas, whether it's the Bessem system, the Tristat system, uh, Absolute Power, our superhero game, when that comes out, they can publish things for that, although it's very similar to Bessem, of course. But they can do any kind of universe that they want using either of those game systems, Tristat or Anime 5e. And the advantage of doing those, of course, is that you get access to the network externalities of people that buy Discommy style products on drive through And so if you buy Bessem, it's really helpful to see that you can go to the Emporium to see everyone else that's produced stuff for Bessem or for Tristat. And if it's labeled Anime 5e, maybe you're not interested in that because that's a different system. But the only way for us to feasibly support everything we're doing is to expand the community content program and not just restrict it to the Tristat Emporium. So it'll probably be called the Anime 5e and Tristat Emporium. It's a little clunky we might come up with something different, but I'm thinking that's what we're going with right now. And that way, we, we what we really want to do is support creators. We want you to take what we've written, create your own ideas, your own scenarios and NPCs and adventures and source books and core books and whatever it is, and publish them on DriveThru. Uh, we want you to get access to that player network. And so that's something that's going to be coming up. We're still working out the details, but Anime 5e isn't out yet, so it's not kind of a critical issue. And of course, neither are the TriStat games. Uh, but once those are going to be released, you'll you'll see the value of opening that up. So yeah, thanks for mentioning that, uh, HR. Uh, yeah, so uh, Roland, uh, Robin, you mentioned the uh, the Highlander Cannibal Volton Dragon. So that, that was kind of we kind of we build it initially. When we were coming up with library pitches, uh, yeah, we, we didn't obviously don't want to have that in print as, uh, you know, it's trademarked. But a Highlander Cannibal Voltron Dragons, that kind of sums up everything. You're playing dry dragons. Uh, the Highlander aspect, you, you there can only be one. There can only be one worm by the end, and you're pulled towards fighting other ones. And then Cannibal, uh, you you gain power by eating each other. Not not unlike cutting off their head, but you, you consume their heart. And by consuming their heart, you gain a measure of their power. And then Voltron is the uh, the combination. So we thought this was a little zany, a little wacky when I came up with the idea. It, it seemed like a very interesting game that, that I would want to play. And maybe not everyone else is going to, but I thought it would be kind of a, a fun thing to do, which is why. Uh, Worms was the second choice that we had. Um, yeah, uh, uh, thanks very much, uh, Fran, for the the compliment about Bessem that you uh, you love it. And Thaddeus, it's great to see you, uh, Thaddeus. And yeah, Demonicity is is really neat. So Demonicity is of the three. I mean, Pixies is, is a lot of fun. There's no doubt. Uh, I got inspired by a game that I purchased in the early '90s called Pixie. And it was something that, you know, like a photocopied and stapled together, a really, really small publishing. But I thought the idea was neat of playing these little tiny creatures. And so we expanded it up and, and kind of formalized it a little bit. And then watching Arietti and watching the borrowers, it's it's a really neat, fun type of relaxing. You probably don't want to be paying a, a two-year campaign of Pixies. It's probably more one-shot oriented or, or small groups. Where something like Demon City, I can really see getting into the, playing these secret operatives and, and setting up these long-term uh, excavations of what's happening in the, the Demon City. So the Demonicity gives you that ability to, to, to have long-term campaigns. You can also play one-shots, of course. But yeah, Demonicity, I'm, I'm quite uh, happy with how that's turning out. Um, so... Yeah, uh, Milo, why not the Discami Emporium? I thought about that, but the, the problem is uh, it doesn't really mean anything if you don't know what Discami is. Now, obviously, if someone's a Bassam fan, they might have heard of our company name, but having 
the the TriStat system, which is the core system. I think more people would know TriStat than Discami. Uh, first of all, how do you pronounce the company name? Who are these guys? Uh, so uh, doing that, and of course, the Anime 5e being a completely new kid on the black block, it was important to have that as a name out there as well. Because there is the, the DMs Guild, for example. If you're doing uh, third edition or fifth edition OGL products that adhere to the restrictions that Wizards of the Coast puts on, a lot of people are going to want to publish through the DM scale. But Anime 5e allows you to ignore some of those restrictions and then use everything that we have in the Anime 5e. So we're still not sure, and maybe we'll end up going with a different name, uh, but I'm thinking kind of keeping the two titles on there. It's also is the legacy of the TriStat Emporium, which we started, we branded, and hate to give it up, but when I found that they can't do two programs, um, yeah, we, we kind of be stuck with whatever we have. Uh, so Fran, you asked about the VTTs, so like Roll20 or, or Foundry or any of the places yet. Yeah, so no, we have no movement whatsoever on those. I was hoping to get things done, but we've been very busy here. And to do a VTT correctly, we can't do it in-house. I, I can't, I don't know how to program it. Uh, I mean, I have lots of computer knowledge, but I do not know how to create those. I, I've gone in, I've tried to read it and understand it to see if I can kind of get up to speed, but I can't. So we're going to have to work with someone that is a professional that can design, for example, a Roll20 sheet really, really well. And then, so that's one thing is we can't do it ourselves. And the second thing is I, up until recently, I had not used these just because that's not the style of play that I do. When I usually play with my friends, it's either around the table or through Discord, much more freeform, kind of theater of the mind. Uh, play a lot of Amber, and so, you know, with Amber, you don't even roll dice. So working with Discord and uh, directly over Zoom or whatnot is how I prefer to play. Now, I had to start doing some research, and so we got a D&D game going, and we're playing that with, with some people over Roll20 to see what I like about the sheets and what I don't. And there's definitely some sheets, uh, aspects of the the D&D implementation of Roll20. I, I do not like certain things. And I think it's if it's an annoyance point for me, maybe it's annoyance points for other people as well. And so how do I make sure that when we do enter the field of virtual tabletops for having systems, on there, character sheets and systems. I want to make sure we do it right. And that takes research and time. And it's not something you could just academically go in and start playing around. It's getting that first person experience of using these during play. And, you know, there's some really neat aspects about these. I mean, I can understand why they're popular, specifically for the grid style of, of play. Not so much for the theater of the mind. I mean, they do have some value with, with images or whatnot, but I do find that they slow things down. If you've ever watched any live plays of these things, it, I think it kind of grinds to a halt versus just verbally going over stuff. But that's a very different style of play, of course. Especially, we're looking at not just Besson, but also Anime 5e. And that is for many people are probably going to be kind of a mixture of that D&D and Anime 5e together, and they're going to want that uh, tabletop aspect of the grid based movement the little tokens that they move around and so i'm also experiencing by getting into it and playing it seeing the many different levels a lot of people kept talking about uh you know they're going to get it for free if they back the kickstarter for anime 5e and i was thinking well, what are you talking about like of course i want a character sheet for free why would you want to pay for a character sheet but there's there's a whole ecosystem that i just have not engaged in because it's not my style of play and this is about you know, buying the games and the modules and, and getting all those in to a virtual tabletop. And up until now, that's never been kind of a Bessem thing and it's probably never going to be fully what we do in an anime fight. I realize that there's lots of people that'll want it, lots of people that, you know, will support what they're doing, but there's also a lot of companies doing that type of stuff. And it's just kind of not the style that we have. So my first goal, whenever we, we, kind of slow down a little bit uh, you know we're a small company we don't need to do so much and at, at our core we are a pen and paper style role-playing company yeah we, we sell things through drive through obviously there's you know a, a pdfs are handy but it's it's much more traditional we're not a computer or an online rpg company we're a pen and paper rpg company but we want to start 
dabbing her foot into the waters of doing some stuff online to support the fan base that wants it, especially. It would have been great during this past year with so many lockdowns and people are away from each other, unfortunately. And it, it would have been great if we could have rewound a year or two years ago and started working on it then and had something for the, the past year of the pandemic. But we, we didn't. And now we're, we're really busy. And so we do want to get it done. We are going to get it done. I do have to get some resources, but I can't hire someone until I know what we actually want to get done. And so that was a very long answer of, is there any news? No, not at this point. There will be. We do want to get it. Why would we not want to do it? It's just, it's not the top priority compared to getting products out, uh, especially the ones that we've, uh, we've delivered. Uh, so HR, you talked about the customized dice. Uh, yeah, so we don't have anything to show you as a preview today. And the customized dice is something in the TriStat game. So when we did uh, the Bessem game, one of the stretch goals we had was to to kind of do do dice. And so we decided to, to do dice for Bessem, and we did that uh, in, um, I think that was an extra, so we decided to go ahead with it. Same thing with Anime 5e. When that came out, I didn't think we were going to do Anime 5e dice because everyone has polyhedral dice, but there was a demand came out with it as a stretch goal and added that out. Now we have another product line of, of dice that we have the Tristat dice, which are custom. We have the Anime 5e dice. And when we were going to do the box sets, it kind of looked at the, say, the, like the D&D starter box set, which, which is a great product. If you are like kind of new, you got this game, you got a rule book, it's really slimmed down. You got character sheets, you got adventure that goes along with it. Like it's, D and D has always been more about the much bigger adventures uh, and much stronger presentation. On here's every map, here's every room, here's a detail, very specific detail of everything that's happening, and they include dice in there as kind of an introductory box set. And we had such good response with the dice that we have that people love their dice. And hey, I, lo I love dice too. I love collecting dice and, and getting them in games. And we thought, well, what if we, when we create these games, and we have pixies or Demonicity or Worms, if you just bought one game, maybe you've never played Besson before, you've just purchased this one box set, it'd be kind of nice that out of the box, you can start playing, even if you don't have a game of Yahtzee lying around, you don't have any dice. And so we provide in each of the, the box sets, there's the full rule book, the 32 page rule book. We give six very brief scenarios, which kind of give the parameters of what's going to happen in that scenario that you're running. We have six pre-generated characters that can be used in any of those scenarios that we have. And then we're going to be throwing in custom dice as well, which is the custom dice, because they're all D6s, it's really replacing one of the faces. And we, because we have something called edges and obstacles, it's kind of like the advantage or disadvantage, where core Bessem, core Tristat is 2d6 and that's all you ever need but when you add in advantages or disadvantages so these edges and obstacles you can roll three or four dice so we thought it made sense to probably throw in four dice maybe two sets of two two let's just say two blue two green or whatever the color scheme we come up with that are customized that have uh Maybe the pixies will have some sort of little pixie logo on the four dice. And the worms will have a little dragon symbol on the four dice. So we don't have anything made up yet. This is something we wanted to kind of do near the end because it's not going to take a lot of time because it's just a single image. But that's something we, we thought would be a fun thing to include. We can get the dice done fairly inexpensively, but I think it, it kind of completes the box set. Uh, we don't need a, a pencil. Uh, in there, like the, the way the old D and D style ones. If you, I don't know if you remember, way going back with the the box sets, the red box sets and the blue, the uh, uh, best me. Those ones, you got the dice and then you got a crayon. You had to color in the crayon, and they often included. I think they might include a pencil with it because that's what you needed. And when when we do board games that require you to write stuff down, we'll usually include pencils. But we're we're not going to include that because you don't need to write anything down in the. Um, the tri-stack games. We give you the full character sheets and you kind of don't need to adjust them. So thanks for the question, uh, HR. But yeah, we, we don't have anything to show right now, but that's what we're going to do with the custom dice. Um, yeah, Fran talked about the Green Power Ranger Arc of Worms. Yeah, you could, absolutely. I mean, we save Ultron, but of course, particularly from Japan, there's lots of examples of four or five people things, objects, creatures combining into one. Uh, and yeah, if you want to do a, a Megazord, uh, you, you know, worms, absolutely, you can certainly do that. Uh, just going through what, uh, you know, scrolling through. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> I'm hoping there's not going to be more lockdowns. I know things are going into the fourth, fourth uh, wave directions in the U.S., but we, 
I'm, I'm very hopeful we're, we're through the worst of stuff. I know that you know, Gen Con, oh, actually, this allows me to pivot. Uh, kind of away from a little bit the pandemic, but uh, certainly related. So conventions are starting up again. Gen Con, Origins, they're in the fall. So they're normally in the summer. You got pushed to the fall. And then there's other ones that come up as well. We, me, uh, Discami is not going to be at any conventions this year for a couple of reasons. One, uh, we just don't think it's very safe and unnecessary at this point. I, I know a lot of people will be going to Gen Con. They'll have 60 or 70,000 people rushing in the exhibit hall. Uh, that's not a level of the comfort that I think uh, we, we want to be. And also because we're Canadian, uh, right now the border's closed. And trying to make travel plans and do a U.S. convention when we don't even know if we can cross the border just it doesn't make any sense to us. So we usually drive to our conventions because, of course, we have booth displays and, and whatnot. And I would hate to make all these plans to go to Gen Con or Origins. Something happens. Border stays closed. It's been closed since uh, March of 2020. And they're still it's still closed. And so, yeah, we're just going to write off the 2021 season. We have plans for 2022. Uh, I've already made some commitments, in, in my head at least, to going to conventions next year. We don't know what's going to happen with the pandemic. We think we kind of have a direction. And, you know, there's, you know, vaccinations are great and whatnot. But because we cannot tell exactly what's going to happen, we've just decided not to go. Now, Japan Anime Games is making plans to go to a lot of those conventions. They plan to go to Essen and whatnot, so they can carry our stuff. We're not going to have Anime 5e out in at conventions for this year. It's still at the printer. But, um, yeah, that's that's the pivot away from the lockdowns. So thank you for that. And um, Absolute Power, William King. Asks, yeah, the first day of autumn. I know that, William, you've, you've been really big on, on Absolute Power, and we are too. And, of course, one of the, the, the things that we decided to do early on was, not, like, there's no sense of me trying to write Absolute Power. I'm not, uh, I'm more of a, of a system guy, less of a setting guy, I guess. Uh, Bessem was primarily a system thing, and so, yeah, I can handle doing Bessem. And the Tristat aspect of absolute power which is the second edition of silver age sentinels so um i'll talk a little bit about our superhero game but whenever we decided to do that yes the system aspect i'm still going to be handling that but uh we had such great experience working with uh, robin flanagan who's on the chat here as uh, roland so he uh sorry they first started working for us back when we did silver age sentinels first edition and got some experience working with their work back on SAS1, liked what they did, fast forward until Besson came out, and we had a chance to reconnect with them, and we actually brought on uh, Robin to do the Dramatis Personae books. Uh, first, it was the four PDFs, and then we combined them into a mass collection, added on volume five, and so that was where we had Robin first kind of jump into getting familiar with the TriStat system in its new implementation, and their work is just fantastic and so we wanted to work full time with robin so brought them on as the creative director but of course we also had them working on absolute power in the meantime because they had the experience with that excellent writing and so i'm kind of the system guy robin's kind of the uh, the absolute power world person and we're putting those together and that will be coming out for kickstarter very shortly so robin just handed over all the files we now have pretty much everything but it's still in the draw format. We have to go through. Uh, it has to be laid out. We have to continue the editing, of course, to make sure it's done. It's going to be a, a really big book because take, say, Bessem and then throw on a much more detailed setting onto it and throw on power levels up to level 10. It's it's going to be a massive product, and we want to make sure we do it right. We've been working with a an illustration company for the past year. We we this art budget on this is the biggest art budget we've had for any game that we've ever done, and we think the art is just turning out spectacularly. The advances and the updates that we've had because SAS Silver Age Sentinels when that came out that was in 2001 was the setting. I think it was published in 2002. We set the game in 2001. Absolute Power will be out in 2022, exactly 20 years later, and it's going to start on kind of January 1st, 2021. So it's set 20 years later as well. And so all the characters 20 years older. Some characters have died. Some have maybe changed sides. Some have changed their scope of what they're doing. Some have changed their look or changed their costumes. I mean, certainly, it's a superhero world. And we know from superhero comics, there are multiple different versions. You have... Uh, character 
one, character two, character three. They're all these different versions of the characters. And we have the same thing. The archer gold, there's more than one archer gold. But we have you know, the, the core power characters that we have, you know, the Sentinel uh, of the guards. And so we got Sentinel and Red Phoenix. Well, Red Phoenix is a little different now, but still Red Phoenix. And Slipstream and Caliburn. So all their characters, we've advanced the story, we've advanced the characters, the setting, 20 years in the future. And then, of course, we're taking the system that was in Silver Age Sentinels, that was almost like Tristat 1.5 or 2.5. Well, this is the new version of Tristat. And so it's updated, which will be fully compatible with best and fourth edition because that in its core is, is we're really happy where that kind of core Tristat is. So the answer, uh, William, that I'm sure you want is when we're coming out with it. So we do have to do the layout. We have to get things underway. We're the type of company, as you may have known from previous Kickstarters, that we don't like to kickstart a product to then have it out a year later. That's, you know, Bessemer aside because of printing issues and COVID and whatnot, that was a little unexpected. Um, we don't kickstart something. We don't crowdfund, take pre-orders for product unless it's done or close to being done. And that's the status that we're going to be with absolute power. So during the fall, at some point, Q4, so sometime September, October, November, December, we will be uh, doing a Kickstarter for absolute power. By then, the book will be done, laid out, we have the art, we have the writing. It just has to get put together and polished. And then with that Kickstarter, that'll kind of give some direction on print runs and maybe some expansions and where we're going to go with that. And so then we send it off to the printer. So that won't be out until 2022. Um, we're hoping first quarter might slip into second. There's still a lot of, on the, up in the air. I don't know if you probably haven't paid attention much of what's going on in the printing industry and shipping from China, uh, from factories. But everything has been global disruption with that so yes absolute power is on track we're a little bit behind where we want it to be but the product is so much better because of that and uh, yeah we're really looking forward to to getting that out and getting that in front of people because we think this is a spectacular game uh, a spectacular setting uh, the the art is great the stories that are going to come from this are wonderful as well and Oh, HR, you mentioned about an AMA coming up on Absolute Power. So we, we do these things uh, whenever I think that maybe it's been a while since we've connected. I mean, I, I'm pretty uh, vocal and connected on Facebook and Discord. I, I'm within the community. I'm certainly around a fair amount. But I think this kind of interaction is, is really good and having this chance to ask questions in a in a format where i can discuss it over video and get a little bit more detailed than you know typing out an answer for example so we will be doing it another one at some point but we typically do them between every four to six months uh, yeah brand new custom pencil yeah, that that would be kind of neat uh we are we are including custom pencils in a new game that we have coming out that is not a role-playing game though this is the next uh, Sailor Moon Crystal board game that we have coming out. So there's a game called Hive Mind that was designed by Richard Garfield, uh, Magic the Gathering fame. Richard Garfield did Hive Mind, and that was put out by Clive It's a party game where you uh, think of kind of like a reverse categories. So categories, you're familiar with it. So you can say like the letter S, and everyone has to write something down that starts with the letter S. And if you match up with someone, uh, like if I say salami and you say salami, we don't get any points because you have to be unique. The opposite is true with hive mind, where you actually try to answer things that other people are going to answer as well. So we licensed this from uh, Garfield and, and Clypey to do a Sailor Moon Crystal version of it. So if you don't know anything about Sailor Moon, uh, this game's probably not for you. But for those of you that are into that, this this has been a year and a half in approval processes because you know there's a thousand different questions and they had to be going over with a fine tooth comb in Japan with the license holder. But in Imposterous, which is at the printer, but we're doing the final approvals on it, which we don't talk about it too much until we're kind of in the approval phase so we can get it out. So it's probably not going to be on shelves until maybe 2022, maybe late 2021. But that game, custom pencils, uh, custom Salem and Crystal pencils, but not for the RPGs. Um, and uh, <laughs> Robin with the pencils. Uh, thanks, HR. I mean, I know you're probably gone already, uh, uh, but uh, thanks for, for tuning in. Uh, go get some food. So Nick, you uh, asked me and my family. Thank you. That's that's very kind, actually. Uh, for those of you who may not know, so at the uh, end of 2019, 
just before, no, just a little bit before COVID hit, my wife was diagnosed with uh, stage four breast cancer. And so that was quite a shock to the, to the whole family. Uh, very, very disruptive. And that kind of really put some perspectives on what was happening. And this was at a time when things were, you know, taking off with the company, but, you know, health issues are really important. And so throughout the certainly the beginning part of 2020 a lot of it was dealing with the the, the raw management of uh, severely declining health at the time uh, but good news came from it and we ended up you know, after some surgeries some uh, strong chemotherapy regimes and karen uh, my wife is she, she's not she's not better in the sense that like everything's everything's fine she still has stage four breast cancer but it is very managed now. The doctors are stunned at how well she has responded to all of the treatments. And, uh, you know, she, she's great. She's actually working for public health in our area. She's giving vaccines because she, she's a nurse. She had to leave her work at the hospital whenever the, the cancer diagnosis came so we can focus on her health. But after she got up to a certain point and things started recovering, so she's exercising, she's out every day, she is uh, working and giving vaccines, uh, which is great to, to give back to the community in that way. And things are, are really looking up. It's, it's great. Uh, it doesn't go away. Stage four breast cancer, usually doesn't disappear but it's now gone into a how can this be managed chronically um so thank you nick that's i really appreciate you asking things are good things are, are definitely good there is always this fear of the next scan is going to show something that we don't want to see but as of right now uh yeah it's it's quite it's, it's quite good for the family so thank you for asking uh Milo ask about uh, other hiring other writers or team members. So that's a that's a tough question because yeah, uh, it makes sense to to have multiple people working on stuff. We usually use multiple artists, for example, and so if we have multiple writers, wouldn't that be easier? And there is it, there is a somewhat of a pinch point where. Uh, me approving artwork for a project and doing art notes and then having the artist submit stuff that isn't that much time on my half and behalf and when it comes in i can assess a piece of art fairly quickly and give notes and comments and send it back it's a little bit different with writing because that's much more involved there's a, an editing process i mean i i I like words and although my background is in business and science i have a strong affinity for making sure the English language is decently used. You're never going to avoid typos and, and some awkward phrasing. But in general, I, I view the English language as something we want to make sure we hold to the highest standards. And this is not just in the technical writing aspect, but also from the project flow to make sure that things flow, whether it's an adventure or NPC write-ups or core books or whatnot. And so I have very high standards and it's difficult for me to release some of those standards to hire people maybe I don't know that I haven't worked with before and ultimately when I find someone that I really really like their work Robin being one of them uh yeah I, I want to continue working with them of course and it's difficult to hire people especially in the past year when which is the, the time we could have been ramping up I meet a lot of people at uh, conventions. I mean, that's that's a great chance to do networking, to meet with uh, freelance writers or artists, for example. And I haven't been to anything since 2019 for a public convention. Certainly the anime cons and the game cons for last year were canceled. And so it's been, and this year they were canceled. So that's a full two year cycle. So I unfortunately haven't had a chance to really meet people, which is why, uh, you know, we did a lot of the heavy lifting here during the lockdown. The, a lot of the work that I worked on with Robin and then bringing Robin on full time to take a lot more heavy lifting. Uh, but it doesn't say that we're not going to work with other people. I'd love to to work with more people. It's just we have to get the right people and it has to fit with kind of what we're doing. Uh, and oh, hi, Morgan. It's going to, uh, to see you joining us here. Um, yeah, Robin's uh, entering some discussion. That's great. Uh, yeah, and William, I'm just catching up on the uh, the, the write-ups. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you're very welcome for the update on that. Uh, all right, another question. So Brandon asked about 
license Besom anime games. Yeah, so let me think. What can I discuss about those? Um, so I can't reveal what exactly is going on. But what I guess I, I be fairly comfortable saying is we have two products that we can work on. One of them, it doesn't make sense to work on it right now. So we're, we've been focused on one anime series that... Let's just say it's we're working on the series maybe before everything is 100% finalized, but we are very confident we're going to come to an agreement. And so the research has been done, spend many, many, many hours writing things down. This is the GAN one I'm taking on as our first licensed RPG. I kind of need to be the lead designer because it's, it's also, when you're dealing with licenses, a lot of the time it's not taking Tristat and just plopping on a license on top. It's customizing the license or customizing the system to fit the license. So when we, way back, when we did the Sailor Moon uh, RPG after Best and First Edition, and then Demonicity, Tenchi Muyo, Demon, Divinity Tank Police, um, Demon City, not Demonicity. Uh, when we did those, we took, we introduced new elements to the TriStat system. So the concept of sub-attributes, which we brought out in first edition Besson with Big Robots, Cool Starships, when we brought out that, and later Hot Rods and Gun Bunnies. Well, when we came out with Sailor Moon, we had to come up with a sub-attribute system, kind of like a, almost like a sub-skill system that we're still using now, where you get the master attribute, say skills, uh, in Bessem Extras, and that gives you every rank or level in that skills attribute, you get 10 skill points to then spend on skills. Well, the same thing with sub-attribute system. Now, I've kind of moved away from sub-attribute systems. I don't like them as much, uh, but, I mean, they have their place. But when we're doing a license, we have to tailor the setting or the, the system to match the setting. In particular, for something like, say, magic, as, just as a simple example, if we're trying to replicate magic in a particular anime series or anime movie, the magic system can be magic. It's kind of a very powers-based, where our generic uh, system of either doing dynamic powers or the power packs, power bundles that we had talked about uh, in Bessem Extras, those ones are great for a multi-genre system like Bessem, but if we're going to do a license, we have to be very, very specific. So there is a license that I'm working on now. Uh, kind of put it aside a little bit, you know, working with, with multitasking. So the TriStat system, Kickstarter has been taking most of my control uh, away. But I've been thinking a lot about this license that we're working on. Did a lot of research, took all the notes, and now it's modifying the TriStat system to kind of fit that we're looking for. And the model that I like that we're going to be moving forward with licenses, because it doesn't matter what the license is, this is how I want to approach it for... Bassum, the TriStat license, is a similar reflection to these TriStat books. These TriStat box sets where they have a small rule book, character sheets, short scenarios, that model works really well for a license when uh, rather than the traditional full RPGs and we did say like Dominion Tank Police, Tenchi Mugo, Sailor Moon. So they were role-playing games and resource books because that's back early on. No, they're I mean, I'm not saying the internet would, didn't exist, but the amount of information on the internet and the accessibility was severely limited. And so when we did originally anime licenses, they were role-playing games, but they're also resource books. Well, jump forward to 2021, it, it, the, the internet has everything on it now for the licenses. There's no sense to do a role-playing game and a resource book nowadays. It only makes sense to do the role-playing game because that's something that is unique and that we can provide where if you want to get episode summaries of of a particular series that we're doing for uh, an anime license well you just go online and you can get them all there's no sense us doing summaries of shows and that's what we did originally was was when we did look at the sailor moon game there's just pages upon pages of summarizing what happens in the show and that just doesn't seem to be useful back then it was because uh, that's all it was it was very difficult to find that information so what we have right now the model that's of the TriStat Trio box sets that we're launching at Kickstarter, that's the model that I want to use for licenses for TriStat. We'll see for Anime 5e, because we're also going to be doing licenses for Anime 5e, but of course that could have a slightly different spin on it. And also the types of licenses we get, we're either going to have to get licenses specific to fantasy for the Anime 5e, because at this point, Anime 5e is a fantasy game. It's not fantasy it's not science fiction or historical or or anything like that so 
the answer is yes we we are working on them uh we don't have confidence to announce anything yet but we're we're further ahead than we are and it's going to be pretty sweet i think so that's all the answers we can give so it, i guess it's a slight update it's not a no answer but it's not a full answer either um yeah and, and thanks Fran, mentioning about the the facebook and the discord uh yeah we i i like being active within the community it's not something that i'll spend a lot of time giving my opinions i mean but part of the problem and uh this goes along with the philosophy that I've had for a long time. There is no official Bessem or Tristat. There is Tristat, and, and how you de determine that you want to implement Bessem in your game is the correct version of Bessem. The problem is whenever a designer is around, it's like, oh, well, what does the designer think? What's the official interpretation? What is the impl implication, implication of that? I find often P it, it can limit creativity. Now, yes, sometimes it's helpful to have a little clarification or not find any problem clarifying things. But there's a lot of creativity out there within the community. And I've seen people ask a question and I think, oh, okay, I'd answer it this way, but I'm not going to step in. And then other community members answer in a way that I think is, is fantastic and presents things in, in a very different light, uh, has a different spin that I hadn't considered. And also at that point doesn't say that there's an official answer because I very much take the belief that once it's out of my hands, I, I've written it, I produced it, and then I hand it over to you, then it becomes your game and your version of it is just as official as the version that I wrote. That's my philosophy and has always been with role-playing games. And I, and I think that my interactions online, I want to reinforce that by not trying to answer everything uh, with the official Mark McKinnon game designer voice. Uh, now, sometimes, you know, I'll provide corrections, factual corrections, or give perspectives, point people in the right direction, kind of give my thoughts. Someone posted the other day, uh, oh, you know, I'm doing this thing in Anime 5e, and I'm going to give everyone 20 free points to do something. What would you spend 20 points on if you had 20 points? I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty interesting. So I came up with a little scenario of what I would do. It's totally power gamery, and, and it was like a stupid idea for an actual role-playing game, but... You know, it's kind of like that wish power. If you had 20 points, what would you do? If you had the best, if you had a superpower of choice, what would you do with it? So I'll come in and, and give kind of thoughts or opinions, and I'll make myself accessible for answers that are company answers, like, hey, what's going on with blah? Or are you going to be at Gen Con? Like those types of things. I want to be around. But the community that's been formed on all the different Facebook groups as well as Discord is fantastic. And that is something that is a real change from when I ran Guardians of Order back in, say, early 2000s. Yeah, th they existed, that there were was RPG Net and there were uh, Usenet groups. Maybe that's even a little bit further back. But certainly the message boards and whatnot. What, well, what we have now is just so much better. And the community is, is one of the best things about what I'm doing now, just seeing what everyone else comes out with. Um, so, yeah, th thank you, uh, Thaddeus. I appreciate that about the family. Uh, yeah, and so Fran, uh, I'm glad you mentioned I'm, I should have said something when HR was on. Certainly, Bessem Cyberpunk, that's something that HR wrote, uh, knowing we we're going to come up with Emporium. He created a cyberpunk source book for Bessem and then gave it to Karen to sell as her product. So she formed a little PDF company to do so so that all of those resources go towards her to help with some of the the healthcare expenses that we have now we were very fortunate being in canada obviously we have a great healthcare system but you know loss of income and some accessory you know whether it's massages or or the uh, accessory healthcare help that we needed to have hr write that book and do everything himself pays for all the art and then hand it over so that karen could earn the profits on that through sales uh was was an amazing uh, donation that he did and I should have said something when he was on greatly appreciated that and did the same thing uh, with the next product which I'm... oh yeah sorry it wasn't the cyberpunk wasn't the first one it was the uh, guide to firearms Bessem guide to firearms was the first product he did but then he went and did it again with the Bessem cyberpunk so uh, we we are so grateful for the the support we got from HR for doing that. Karen certainly was very, very grateful for that. And now Karen kind of publishes a few things on drive through So that's part of the Emporium. So it's her, her company is Just Honey Badger it. And so take a look in there if you're interested. She has just short modules and she has some uh, the pretty ponies, which are, you know, obviously 
My Little Pony uh, stats for Besom, but you know with the serial numbers filed off, so so no one can get sued on that. So yeah, it's uh, it was wonderful. So I really appreciate you you mentioning that, Fran. Thank you. Uh, Brandon, yeah, think about Yomacon. I just saw was it yesterday? Yomacon, Yomacon, which is in Detroit, just announced that they can run the convention this year. Uh, but I can't go to it. But they but they are no they're going to be running one in uh, 2021. Um, Fran mentioned about a critical role style show with the products. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, it's funny, back whenever Bessem was not even out yet, it's at the very beginning, my friend Marcelo, Marcelo Figueroa has been in the industry, he's worked for many different companies. Currently, he's the sales manager at DeVere, uh, which does a lot of board games. So Marcelo said, wouldn't it be wonderful? Like he's he's in L- outside of LA, so basically kind of California, lots of, of uh, studio stuff there. Wouldn't it be great to get a Bessem show and get these professional people, you know, some some really dynamic and uh, outgoing, not necessarily actors, but actor types to have a role playing show? And of course, Critical Role does this, and, and several other shows. Yeah, that would be that would be amazing. But we're, you know, a micro company. Again, where we're going to be focused on, we're going to be focused on getting product out. And so I won't ignore the possibility of doing some stuff. I've kind of come up with some thoughts about, you know, how can we turn a a business model for support for creating these live play sessions as an ongoing as opposed to like a one shot, which I'd still like to do once, you know, things calm down a little bit. I, I still have plans to do some some one shot live plays just to kind of demonstrate how I think the system should be run. But yeah, it's, uh, I guess, dreams as opposed to reality. There's a lot of people that watch it. I mean, I, as a bit of a side thing, uh, I'm just stunned how many people watch other people role play. Um, I don't find it the most engaging, uh, but my kids, like, they'll watch people play video games, which doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, yeah, I'll watch, you know, say Will Wheaton's tabletop, but uh, tutorial videos on how to play something, and I think there's value in that. But these D and D series that go on for years of you know weekly campaigns that people tune in to watch other people role play it's astounding. I I don't get it. I'm happy that it's out there. I'm I'm happy that people are loving that, and I would love to participate in that because I think it would be great to to get some eyes on that. I just don't get it. Uh, but that's okay. I'm I I like role playing as opposed to watching people role play. Just I'll always get enough time to to do that. So thanks for the uh, the suggestion, Fran. Yeah, it would would be great to do that. Um, yeah, Robin had mentioned about updating Empire City. Yeah, obviously that's what Robin has been focused on is taking the update of the, of the setting because certainly the update of the system, taking SAS V1 and turning that into absolute power. Yeah, absolute power. That has been something that's going to be on my plate, but the Empire City setting and how what has happened in the past 20 years and what does it mean to be a superhero? And that's why we, we changed the name. This is not Silver Age Sentinel's second edition. This is absolute power. And it's the, the idea, and if you've looked at what's happened in the world in the past 20 years, you'll certainly understand that's coming from, you know, watch Amazon Prime, Netflix, CNN, Fox, uh, any of the the news stuff, that there is this desire to just reach a little bit further. If I could, if if I'm a superhero, if I just had a little bit more power, that I can just grasp a little bit more control, that I can keep you safer. And I just need that little bit more, and that constant reach of just that little bit more, and I can help. I can do good. That is the the threat, and that's where the the name Absolute Power came from. Because, you know, the, the the old quote about power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts absolutely. We're not we're not getting into the boys. I mean, the, the guard is not the boys. This is not a full on murder superhero game. Uh, it's not invincible. It's not like that. But there are definitely elements that remove some of the shine on the sil- off the Silver Age that when we created Silver Age Sentinels, that was the vibe we we're going for. But now the vibe is a little bit different. Still, it's upbeat. This isn't super dark. This isn't dark Gotham. This isn't the boys, as I mentioned. Uh, but absolute power, we thought, was was the perfect name for what really would mean to be a superhero in 2021. You just need that little bit more power to keep every, everyone safe. Uh, Silver Age has come and gone. It's very, very true, Robin. Um, 
So it looks like some of the, the questions are kind of dried off, questions or comments. I'm happy to keep this going for a little bit. It's almost been an hour. Uh, certainly, I haven't talked much about kind of the company and what's happening now. So let me take maybe a step back and talk a little bit about what's happening. And then, of course, if any other questions come up, please feel free to post them. But as I mentioned right now, where we're sitting, currently Kickstarter three trail box sets. So not too long ago, a couple months ago, we wrapped up a Kickstarter for Anime 5e, which blew us away in terms of the expectations. I mean, this is why Kickstarters exist, because we had 8,000, over 8,000 people backing the game. And there's no way we would have printed enough copies of the book had we not done Kickstarter. If we had gone back 20 years, whenever I was first publishing, when you had to just kind of guess what the, the demand would something would be, we would have been wrong with Anime 5e. So the demand was, was just incredible. People like their anime, people like their D&D, and they want to put them together. So Anime 5e wrapped up, and all of those products right now are at the printer. We've been doing updates on the Anime 5e uh, Kickstarter page. Even if you didn't back the game, you can read the updates to see where we're sitting with that. So the Anime 5e products, they were fulfilled very shortly after the Kickstarter ended for the digital delivery of PDFs, because again, as I mentioned, the products were done. And then the physical products are at the printer and they'll be out sometime in the fall. We don't know the exact dates. November-ish seems most likely. Could be October, could be December. We don't know. Lots of things out of our control at this point, but everything is at the printer. So that's the Enemy 5e, the current line, which is from the Kickstarter, which is you know kind of the core product, your GM screen, your core book, your character folio, your dice, and a few other things like that. Bessem line, people say, what's going on with Bessem? And that's true. We've been, we'd have a bit of a lull right now with Bessem because we had to focus on some of the other things we had to get done. Now, that said, Bessem is in the first year of Bessem. It was supported with over 12 products out there, plus some things on the Emporium as well with some digital stuff. Plus, uh, you know, we, we did through the Kickstarter send out copies of the older uh, Bessem stuff out there. So there's a lot of support previously for Bessem, and then when we did for third ed or fourth edition, we started it with a great start of the line with an initial Kickstarter, and then we did the Bessem Extras Kickstarter. There was always going to be more after that, but that was kind of the launch that we needed. And then the next book that we needed to focus on was uh, Bessem Multiverse. After the Extras, which is like your optional rules, and we wanted the setting book. And that's something that was on my radar but i knew that i could not write that that was not in in my wheelhouse and so robin was the right person to work on the anime 5e multiverse but i needed to have robin finish absolute power first and absolute power is now done yes there has been some work done already you know because you can multitask as a writer and so robin is now pivoting over to work on the best um, multiverse we've already had many discussions about it it's going to be a great product the, the initial setting was already established of course in the core book but now we're going to be expanding that out and that should probably be in the 144 hardcover range that we're going to be coming out with in addition we did talk about one other product that has not come out yet that was promised in the core book for Bessem, and that is the Bessem LARP. Bessem LARP is absolutely delayed because Bessem LARP was dependent upon convention seasons for playtesting. So it, ha it is nowhere near where it needs to be. This is a game that you're not probably going to be playing in your house with a couple of friends in your, in your basement. This is a game you're going to be playing at conventions, gaming stores, larger things. So the, the LARP book is pushed back I would say earliest 2023 at this point because we have to get it written. I have to primarily do the system work on that. Uh, we need more research. Got to go out to some LARPs and talk to some more people and do lots of interviews. And then we have to do some play testing at it. And hopefully 2022 will be a great year for doing some play testing of this system and then finalizing it. So the Bessem LARP, which is the final book we had promised in the core rules, that one is, has been pushed back a long time, unfortunately. But you know, it's the way it is. But Best of Multiverse, as I said, it will be a, a Q1, Q2, Q3, let's hope Q2, uh, 2022 release that's being written. And that will expand out the core aspects of the setting system. But that's not the only book that we're going to be doing at that time when we're crowdfunding. As you've seen from our recent ones, we like, kind of like crowdfunding several things together. I don't want to do just Bessem Multiverse, and that's the only thing we're kind of uh, raising funds for, because I think there's value not only to consolidate shipping, but also for just the excitement of a package of products. And so with the Bessem Multiverse, one of the things that we announced maybe about a month ago is we have reacquired the rights to Eurasia. Uh, S. John Ross. So Cumberland Games is we bought Eurasia from him. So Eurasia was a fantasy setting 
that originally came out for Bessem Second Edition as a fantasy source book. And it was a lot of fun. We did a Bessem D20 version of Well of Eurasia. Uh, and Eurasia is a really wacky, fun fantasy world. When Guardians of Order went under, we transferred those rights back to S. John. And, and for the past 20-ish years, 15, 20 years, S. John has been expanding Eurasia as a systemless resource. And so he's been expanding the, the, the setting and just you know, the, the fiction and whatnot. And so that's been available for quite a long time in PDF format. And he's been making, you know, just a, a little side business out of expanding Eurasia. Well, we were looking at uh, reacquiring that. And so now Eurasia is much bigger than it used to be. There's more to it. And so we bought all the rights to the entire Eurasia and everything that goes along with that. And we're going to be re introducing your region into best and fourth edition and that is going to be one of the inner worlds uh, of the cosmic web if you're familiar with the best of multiverse and how it's set up you have your prime worlds uh, and then you have your inner worlds and your inner worlds are kind of connected to your prime worlds. they're not as important as your as your prime worlds and so the fantasy world of uh icarus which is or Icarus, so that is a fantasy prime world, one of the major worlds that will be fe featured in the Bessa multiverse, well, Eurasia is attached to that world. And so Eurasia will have a separate book as well as a, you know, like a campaign setting. It's a setting, it has ideas, it's a world you can play there, you could just mine it for ideas uh, if you want. And so that'll be coming out at the same time as the Bessa multiverse. And then another thing we have not announced yet, but we're in the early early-ish stages of we, we've contracted a writer who's going to be working on a trilogy novel series but these are lit as a lit rpg series if you don't know what a lit rpg series is i won't be able to explain it very well but it's the idea that there is a a subgenre of fantasy or game fiction called lit rpgs these are games sorry these are novels stories that take place effectively within the game and they have games as a as a major stat component the easiest way to kind of say this take something like sword art on a line so if you had sao and as an anime setting and everyone inside sao knew it was a game that's kind of what little rpg is it's it's a game fiction and we're going to be writing a not we we have an author working on a series that's set within the best of multiverse that is you, you don't you don't need to play the game Bessem. it's it's just like a, there's tons of lit rpg stuff that i've been reading and a lot of them aren't tied to a specific game they're game type systems but they're not a, a specific world so you might hear about the alaron kongs and the land or there's uh, Viridian gate online there's rogue dungeon there's so many novel series out there a lot of them fantasy but some of them are science fiction as well well we're going to be doing a Bessem novel trilogy series and so we if everything goes well uh because we have the writer working on the first book now we will have the first book in the trilogy available at the same time that the multiverse comes out and it's set within the multiverse we won't kind of give away what's happening but you know it'll be very familiar and it uses the game stats in the book i'm not really describing it well because uh I haven't really thought about how to describe what lit RPG is yet, but it is, it is just an, an excellent game slash fantasy genre to look into. And so that's kind of the next series that we're doing for Bessem. That will be, like I said, mid next year is when that next release for Bessem will happen. Absolute Power, we talked about that recently. So that is the next big full game. Uh, Anime 5e is out. The Tristat system books are kickstarting now. And then in the fall, we're going to have Absolute Power, which is a new setting full game. And that will have your, your GM screen, your character folio, your dice, like all the stuff that go along with it on an initial release with the idea of supporting that as another line. So we have the Bessem 4th edition line, very well supported up to now, has another round of supports that we're going to be doing. We have the Anime 5e line, which isn't out yet. Obviously the PDFs are out, but the products are not going to be on store shelves until end of the year, early next year, depending on shipping times. And we have plans on how we're going to be supporting that. Uh, Robin and I are in discussion about taking, uh, making a setting. Now, are we going to do a magic book? Are we going to do a monster manual style stuff? You know, this is D&D &D mixed with anime, and we can do a lot with it. And so we have a whole line of that that we're going to be coming out with. 
And then we have the licensed products, as I already talked about. We have to support, come up with licensed products for Anime 5e, as well as licensed product for Besom. And they could be single releases. They could be single plus some expansions, depending on which licenses we're looking at doing. And that's another layer of support. Now, as you can see, there's a lot on the go. We also have, uh, I'd like to see some more Tristat box sets uh, in the future. They're, they're not our primary line, but I think they, they could be a lot of fun with it. And I, I already have a fourth one that is uh, kind of ready to go. It's, it's in its final stages, but that's going to be the next one we're going to do at some point. And then who knows what, what's after that. So that's kind of the, the longer term look at the company that we have. And then for people that know it have been following along with Bessem, yeah, we, we would love those multiverse splat books, which are the setting slash genre. So yes, the Bessem multiverse is a setting book that kind of covers everything. But then it'd be nice if we had specifically uh, an Imago book, an uh, Akaris book a cathedral book and these are your setting splat books Bazaroth, as an example is one of the prime worlds it'll appear in the Bessa multiverse and we'll get more details but Bazaroth is really almost like demonic horror and so we can come up with a book that expands the setting of Bazaroth while at the same time provides guidance on the demonic horror genre for a game and so these splat books is the common well, all the old white wolf term for these expansions of all these different worlds are not just settings they're settings and genre so when we did back if you're a long-term Besson fan like cold hands dark hearts was kind of our genre book for for horror and uh, cute horror but horror with a setting as well and uh, eurasia was a fantasy with uh setting as well as genre and that's kind of the approach i'd like to take for going forward but now we're we're really jumping ahead and looking forward in terms of what's happening we have a short-term focus and we know what products we have to do in the short term we are we've grown the company incredibly in just the the two years that we've kind of two and a half years we've kind of been doing this and we want to support and make some excellent products out there we think we have a great team and yeah the team is probably going to grow at some point but at the same time we're not going to be the the next uh you know wizard of the coast or pathfinder or we're, we're not we're not a large company we're not going to get to be a large company for many of you you know i'm a politician i'm a city councilor here in guelph and so that takes up a lot of my time this is not my full-time job this unless it's, it's maybe two full-time jobs uh but being a city councilor is considered a part-time job and it's something i really enjoy being a politician and i continue doing that while i also do gaming uh, and in addition of course family and, and whatnot as well so lots of things up in the air but i think if you've looked at our track record and what we've done i think we've done some great stuff and that'll just give you an idea if, if the I, if the phrase about the the best indicator of future success is is past uh, performance i think you could look at what we've done with Discami and have confidence that we're going to do some great stuff going forward it's just as we grow and we come up with all these different lines and licenses we we are not going to be doing four or five or six Bessem books a year or anime five books a year or absolute power books every year we're going to be spreading our resources over all of our different lines to make sure that we produce things that everyone's going to want that's one of the real advantages of having an emporium on drive through is is we know that there's other people who can support what's going on so if you we, we don't have time to do a cyberpunk book and hr did that and that's up for sale we don't have time to do a book of firearms hr did that we have people doing solo adventures we have um lots of little npc type uh, things the short adventures short npcs that's going up there and we'd like to think maybe at some point there's going to be full-on core books that are going to be using tristat or enemy 5e or whatnot and so that will support the line by getting those networks externalities and so the more people we can have access to using stuff through drive through the more everyone benefits from it uh all right so just now that i've talked for a while and i can go through and just see if there's any other kind of questions came up um uh, apparently there have been <laughs> uh okay all right oh milo asking do i have any time for myself well that's 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 an interesting question yeah i while i'm i'm worked a lot uh, you know particularly in the past year and a half i've been locked in my house like 
many people who are at the stay at home orders and are trying to be safe and keep their family safe and not go on unnecessary trips. That will disappear and at some point you know, we'll go out and be a little bit more social as time goes on hopefully as we get this pandemic uh, under control. So my hobbies right now are pretty well um, like gaming is my hobby and I, I like to think of it as while this is a job as politics is my job uh, this is also creative and it's kind of art so if I was to think of if I was a, a sculptor or a painter then doing that work may be work producing a sculpture but at the same time it can be a hobby and you can enjoy doing it and it's your passion well gaming is my passion I love system design I love big ideas I, I may not be the best writer and that's why I hire people like Robin, who are far better writers than I am. But I think I'm pretty good at, at big picture system aspects and the technical aspects of producing an RPG. And so this is a hobby of mine. So I don't, I don't do a lot right now. Uh, I mean, I have some friends who play board games and go to movies. And you know, when things get back to normal, doing more of that. But uh, a lot of my hobbies is working as well. And so... It is a full-time job. It's a full-time plus, and I do politics on the side, uh, or sometimes on the side, sometimes it takes up all the time. Uh, so, you know, I appreciate that, uh, Milo. Thank you. I I enjoy what I do. I don't feel I'm overworked. I don't feel there's an incredible amount of pressure. Any pressure that I put on me, it's because I, I want to do better uh, for everyone that I have counting on us. Uh, but at the same time, there's advantages to doing this with my company, where if... Karen needs to go to a medical appointment. I need to be there. If my family needs me for something, I can be there. And so I'll work as much as I can. And if I start to getting burnt out, I'll, I'll take a step back because I got to make sure that the family's there for support. But yeah, uh, thanks for the concern. So far, it's been it's been pretty good. Uh, so Fran, you asked, do you have a shorthand version of how I sort out the system development on properties? So mm, that's a good question. Um, it's difficult to tell because the Tristat, as an example, has been, you know, the, the core that I've been working on, you know, that I've been working on that since 1996. So the first Bessem came out in 97. Uh, and then Anime 5e, which is the next kind of big system line. Well, that's kind of a little bit of Bessem, a little bit of D&D. And again, I've been playing in those fields for a long time. But a lot of the time when I sit down is I have to come up with a framework of the vision of what the projects are going to be. So when I was doing the, the TriStat box sets, it was, well, what do I want to play? And the Pixies was the first one that I came up with because I thought, yeah, having something fun and silly, uh, you know, at the time where everything was locked down and the world was going to hell and it was really dark. And so I naturally went to the fun aspect as opposed to the big campaign, you know, the epic stuff. Let's go small, literally small and fun. And so once I come up with the framework of what I want to portray, then I have to look at the system and say, what, what parts of the system, if I'm using the same system like a TriStat, what do I have to modify in order to get it to fit the vision of what I want to play? And so there's no direct way that I can kind of easily explain when I'm doing something like Anime 5e. It was a lot of, of spreadsheet math at that point because I was getting heavily into breaking down in minutia what a fighter does, what a wizard does. How do you match up these with, with points and how do you balance everything out? And it was a lot of just heavy research and writing and balancing and then thinking about combats and spells and special abilities and you, you know you have to have this written down you have to have sheets uh to balance it out and then going through and, and double checking triple checking so it's not an easy way to describe it but i think it is because i'm a big picture person i usually start with the big picture and then i work down from there uh let's see Oh, uh, thanks, Thaddeus. Uh, I guess you're gone now, so I appreciate you turning in. Thank you. And Brandon, you mentioned you have both versions of Reason. Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. And it's going to be even better, the new version, when we can take what F. John has done, add on the best and fourth edition system. We'll have to see. Like I haven't really gone into it, and so I don't know exactly how it's going to be tailored. But there are so many extra things he did that's not just your, your typical RPG supplement, because, you know, S. John is 
he doesn't run with the standard ways of doing things. He's very creative. And so taking that, it's going to be a bit of a, of a strained turn for a book. I'm really looking forward to, to come out with that. Whenever we first did it, I fell in love with the first year region. There's ideas that I still play with in my games now from way back then. Uh, all right. And uh, yeah, uh, Isagai novel. That's that's basically uh, it's a Bessem Isagai trilogy is what it's going to come out. So that there'll be it'll be a standalone book, the first book, but at the same part, it's it's part of a of a bigger trilogy as well. And I love the idea that you know we can get into something that's not just RPGs as well. That it's, this is this is actual novelization. We did the for when we did Silver Age Sentinels, we did two superhero anthologies which are set in the super sentinels universe use the characters from them for some of the stories other ones were just completely original and we ended up getting an origins award for best uh game related fiction for one of them so uh, we've we've done it before with silver age sentinels and really enjoyed it as an anthology series well, well never done a novel series so looking forward to doing that i'd love to do his manga and a comic book series and a comic book for absolute power manga for Bessem at some point but uh you know that that may be either way down the road or, or not feasible because of the, the very different distribution networks for those. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, Lori, thank you. Uh, yeah, rocking as being a politician. Um, yeah, L L Lori's a, a friend who's in the ward that I'm in, and so uh, I try to give the best representation I can. And, and uh, Lori's certainly had a, a lot of talks about the, the political situation here, as well as being a supporter of what we do. She's, uh, Lori's not a role player much, but has been a big uh, Kickstarter supporter. So thanks for, uh, for tuning in. Uh, yeah, the novels, the character sheets in them. So that, that's, we mentioned as a Kickstarter goal. So I don't want to scare people away who maybe are just looking for a good story. And there's lots of great uh, lit RPGs out there. And so I want to make sure that the book, first and foremost, is a great lit RPG series. But certainly it makes sense that if we're going to have characters in the book that we should have the character stats and being able to rep represent those very strongly in... Uh, maybe a PDF format, maybe maybe printed or whatnot. And yeah, that's something we'll definitely be making available. We're talking with the, the author right now, but how best to implement that. And certainly has come up that, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to make sure we, we have those. Almost like the old Dragonlance no uh, novels, right? Like you have Dragonlance novels or Forgotten Realms novels. You want to make sure you have those characters available as well in case people want to play them in the game. Uh, all right, well, it looks like that's pretty well the... the uh, the questions for that, it's been an hour and a quarter. Uh, sometimes I run them shorter, sometimes I run them longer, but uh, I think we've covered a lot of the questions. We've covered a lot of the, but the direction that we're going, and it's been a bit of an update since we, we last talked. We didn't have Anime 5e, uh, and that has certainly you know, been really big for us and, and great for us to expand our production lines, as well as the TriStack Kickstarter. If you're a Bessem fan, highly recommend you check it out. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun little way. The buy-in's really cheap if you're interested in just the PDF versions or a little bit more if you're interested in the box sets. I think they'll be a good addition to integrate with your Bessem games. And if you're here because you're a, an Anime 5e person, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great thing to, to try out a different system that you see that is tangentially tied to some of the aspects that are in Anime 5e as well through the attribute power based system. So we have a work cut out for us. We're going to be busy. Robin is working away. Uh, we are looking forward to getting the Anime 5e in your hands uh, if you've pre-ordered those. They're at press now. The Tri-Step books are going to be off the press shortly after the Kickstarter ends. We have Absolute Power is going to be our next really big project that we're jumping into next. And 2021 was a really big year for us. 2022 is going to be big as well. And thanks for, for tuning in and asking the questions and being part of this. So it was really great to have a chance to talk to you all once again. Thank you. And uh, I'll see you in part of the community. Have a good night.